Hello, I'm JW. Today we're going to have a look at an item which has been sent in by Steve from Orpington, and it's this horrid thing. Now, this is a bulkhead light styled along the lines of certain quality ones which aren't made anymore, and uh, this was apparently £3.47 for the entire thing. Now, uh, this is not a high quality item, as we'll see in a moment, and in fact it's probably the uh, extreme opposite of that. It's a very low quality and not very good at all. So there is a note with this, so let's have a look at that, and we'll see about the item itself. So here's the note, and uh, so this is from Steve, and uh, got a bit wet there when it was raining. But uh, anyway, he bought this thing from a major retailer in the UK for £3.47, and he bought two of these from store in his loft, but uh, then discovered that uh, there was a reason it was only £3.47, and that was that it's a piece of junk, of course. So, uh, as he's put here, this is uh, really scraping the barrel with regards to design, especially knockouts and general difficulty in wiring up the terminals, and uh, I believe it's impossible to mount the light and then to connect it up afterwards. And of course that's how you should do these things, you generally attach the equipment to whatever, and then of course uh, terminate the wiring inside. So here is the item, it's a fairly sort of utilitarian item, just sort of a bulk headlight there, and uh, body made of plastic, and some kind of uh, glass possibly piece inside. Manufactured by Meridian Lighting does up to 60 watts in total apparently. So anyway, let's uh, dig in and see what we can find. Now the problem with buying cheap things is of course that they are cheap for a reason. And you might be tempted to buy cheap things because of course nobody likes spending too much money. Unfortunately if you go too cheap any savings you've made are eliminated because if something takes you two hours to fit instead of ten minutes, well, there's a big pile of extra wasted money. So uh, unless you're providing your services for free, things that take too long and a big faff will in fact cost a load of money. So plastic sort of over cage, that appears to be glass, and uh, plastic base as well. A couple of fixing points there for screws and various cable entries, three two on the side and one on the end there. So let's just open it up. Now this style of light has been available pretty much forever. The older ones were generally metal, sort of a uh, die cast base, and uh, metal grid over the front, and the metal grid usually had a lot more pieces on than this uh, piece of plastic. So anyway, right there's just the plastic top, so it's just uh, fairly bendy and uh, flexible stuff there, not going to provide a whole pile of protection. Nice little washer there, which can be lost when you've undone it and uh, the screw falls out. So again, that's uh, not really what you want because, bearing in mind, you're going to be up a ladder or something with that. So this is actually glass, which is uh, relatively surprising. But on the other hand, glass is a very cheap material, so uh, perhaps not. And then inside we've got some odds and ends there. We'll have a look at in a moment. The instructions and then the light itself. So bayonet lamp holder, that's B22 as it says on the side there, just with the string pins there, some kind of ceramic material actually. A bit of tin foil in the back as a reflector, and then uh, the wiring or where the wiring is supposed to go underneath here. Now we've got these little plug things that come with it. And it is closed off on all three, so there's some kind of uh, water resistance there. Very thin rubber gasket around the outside. But the problem here is that these only just press in, so presumably you're supposed to bust out one or more of these. Put your wiring through, and then this is going to be a seal, but it's not going to be a particularly wonderful seal, although it's obviously better than nothing. The real problem here is how on earth do you get the wiring in, because you've got two terminals there, one on each side, as these things are. One screw is here, and the other screw is uh, under there, around the back, where you actually cannot get a screwdriver. So there's no way of putting the wiring in and then attaching it. You would then have to presumably take this out of here. So how on earth is this actually screwed in there? Because uh, right, does it uh, lift out or screw out or what? 
Okay, well it's actually fixed in with a screw from the top, so the only way to get it out of there is going to be to undo that. And that comes out. Yeah, and it's just a screw graunched through into the uh, plastic at the bottom. So the only way you're going to get this connected is to put this on the wall, put the screws in, bring the wiring through, through these rubber bits here, bring it into the bottom, then undo the uh, screws on both sides here, which they uh, do undo, put your wires up into the toner holes here and here, tighten up the screws and then get your screw here and put it back down inside there where it came out of. And notable this has got holes for two and there's only one in use. And then while this is on the wall sort of faff around and try and balance that uh, in position there and then tighten this up again hoping that it actually goes back into the plastic without uh, splitting and busting and get it sort of semi-aligned into the uh, correct place there and then theoretically that will do the job. Now the other problem here is what's missing and that's the earth terminal. Now we've got two there line in neutral nowhere to put the earth terminal and I don't suppose for a second there's anything under here but we'll take this screw out anyway and see what we've got there. So let's uh, just get rid of that. Yeah so there's nothing in there whatsoever so you've got nowhere to put the earth terminal because there is no terminal so you're going to have to provide something to attach it to, which unfortunately is going to be left sort of flapping about in the breeze there because there's no way of uh, really fixing it to anything. This metal piece at the back is basically it is literally tin foil. It's, uh, as you can see, it's just as thin as it pretty much can be. And this apparently goes up to 60 watts. Now, thankfully, uh, incandescent lamps are pretty much a thing of the past, but if you did put a 60 watt lamp in here, this is going to get pretty hot hence the ceramic holder. So you can't really put any wiring near the top, it's all going to have to be at the bottom and uh, certainly uh, not ideal having your earth connections just sort of floating about randomly at the bottom. Now it comes with the other bits so let's just see what we have there. So as usual the non-standard sized plastic plugs and those horrid screws from whichever factory makes them in China where you've basically got a single thread which requires 3,000 turns to go in halfway and then of course they're going to be made of that soft metal so once it's in halfway the head shears off and then of course you uh, can't get out of there so I don't know who makes these screws but all equipment seems to come with them please stop using them just uh, put nice ones in instead and these are actually Phillips head screws as well rather than the more common uh, posi driv ones but uh, that's again pretty typical we've also got these which are going to be some kind of glass fibre sealing presumably to go over the uh, two conductors in the light fitting here, some kind of heat resistant covering, but really they are far too short, because bearing in mind if you put it up in there it would just about do the line in neutral if you only had a single cable coming in and you put them as short as possible, so as you see it's going to barely reach to the uh, fitting there and just to the outside, so if you had two cables coming in and sort of going on to the next one you'd need at least double the quantity and then of course there's the question of where's your earth going because uh, obviously there's only two of them. So yes it really has been made down to the lowest price. It has this uh, gasket here which is sort of partially glued in. Not particularly well over this side it would seem. But at least it's fixed in over there. I intended to seal against the natural piece of glass but uh, if we actually put that on there does that even tighten down and grip it so we just tighten that down to a decent amount well it's reasonable it's not particularly uh, well fitting around the bottom there as you can see it tends to sort of pull in the middle and uh, not the top, so some water resistance but certainly uh, not going to be uh, particularly uh, waterproof and uh, not really the sort of thing you would want to be putting outside. It's the marked uh, double insulated so it doesn't need its own earth connection but of course you need to take a uh, protecting conductor to all lighting points. That's a requirement of the S7671 so you still need somewhere to terminate them inside. 
So there we go. Other than that, it's a uh, exactly what you didn't pay for. You're going to pay something that cheaply. You basically get exactly what you would expect. The lowest possible price and no real quality uh, given whatsoever. And uh, as it says in the letter there, yes, it's cheap, but it's going to take you ten times longer to fit. Well, it's not cheaper at all, is it? It's just going to be better to buy something that's better and can be fitted in a quarter of the time. Now, just an addendum there, we should look at the instructions for these products that are supplied, of course. So uh, here are those instructions. A humidity-proof lamp. Well, it's water resistance, dust resistance, and a rational construction. Guess which country this came from. The lamp is mainly used in indoor decoration, avenue, garden, lawn, warehouse, tunnel, mine, etc. for illumination. I wouldn't recommend putting this in a mine. I don't think that's going to comply with any known standards for that. And it's one of these instructions that applies to 100 different models here. I've got all these different ones here. Some are 100 watts, some are 60 watts. Uh, class 2, IP44, which is basically uh, rain resistant or something. Rated voltage and whatever else. And the 22 lamp holders we've seen. Installation instruction. Switch the power off before the installation. Fix cable through the rubber plug of the lamp base, as in that. Make sure of the installation place of the lamp, then fix it with plastic screws and tighten the screws to fix the lamp well. Screw the light bulb into the socket. Yeah, I think there's something missing here, isn't there? The power of the light bulb should not exceed the maximum power of the lamp. Mount the upper cover and fix it with screws. So at no point here does it tell you to actually connect the wires to the lamp holder. Just fix the cable through this and um, then uh, it's magically connected, isn't it? Please check the connection of the power cord is safe and reliable for installation. When the light bulb is burning or not completely cooled down, please do not touch it with your hands to prevent burns. Obviously designed for incandescent lamps, which uh, suggests these instructions are quite old. When the protection glass is damaged, it should be replaced immediately. Changing the light bulb, well, yes, yeah, switch off and open it and put a new one in, and basically that's it. And notice the picture doesn't relate in any way to the thing we've got here. And uh, caution. The maintaining should be done only by a qualified electrician. This product should not be disposed of with household waste, and so on. So, fairly generic, and uh, didn't really tell us anything we didn't already know. So, thanks to Steve for sending that horrid thing in, and until next time, thanks for watching.